one of the well, two most important symbols of Easter is the Passion and the Cross. And then afterwards it's the, the Resurrection. So when it comes to religious uh, festivals and uh, religious uh, themes and meaning, these meanings are contained in symbols. Because in these religious festivals uh, are, are themes about God that we do not have the language, the full language as human beings to then talk about God. So what most religions uh, do to communicate God is they use symbols. And uh, so the, in this Easter festival, the two important symbols that uh, we turn to to get uh, the meaning behind Easter is the Passion and the Cross. So what is the Passion? The Passion is the moment in the life of Jesus where he enters into this passive mode. So the word passion comes from the Latin word passio, which means from that word passio comes the English word to be passive. So in Jesus' passion, it refers to the, the, the time of his life where he enters into this passive mode. He stops being the doer. He stops doing what he did for most of his public ministry, and that is uh, uh, visiting the sick, the poor, people who are marginalized because of uh, uh, being tagged as uh, sinners, like prostitutes and tax collectors, and uh, he stops healing. He heals a lot of people, and to the extent that people were flocking to him, he raises a few people from the dead. And uh, so Jesus, for most of his uh, public ministry, of about three years, was very active. And to the extent that uh, he had no time to rest, and then uh, we hear that he takes time away to go out to a quiet place up in the hills or out into the ocean, uh, take time to rest. So for, so for most of his public ministry, Jesus was doing a lot of things in his ministry. But when he enters into his passion, he ceases to be what he is doing and enters into this passive mode where he allows whatever the the soldiers are going, do, uh, going to do to him to let it happen and, um, and to the point of silence, to be silent. And uh, so this is what we uh, mean by the passion. Now in Christian tradition and Christian faith, we, are, we say that we are saved by the passion and the cross of Jesus. It, it, it doesn't seem right uh, makes sense to the human mind because the human mind always thinks that we, that we are saved by God's action or the action of Jesus. But when we say that we are saved by the passion, that means the passivity of Jesus, it seems to work totally against the mental human mind. So how does this work? How does the passion uh, become the means of our salvation from sin? And so we have to then to put this against the the the, the Passover meal of uh, Jesus. For the Jews, the Passover meal is a freedom from uh, slavery in Jew in Egypt. For Christians, is the Passover from slavery of sin. 
So when in the Christian sense, when we say we are saved from sin. So how does this happen is that, um, that the passion reveals something about God and how God works and how God operates. And that is through vulnerability, uh, through weakness, uh, through yeah, helplessness on the cross. Uh, the Bible records that when Jesus died and gave up his last breath, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Now, that curtain, that veil, uh, is a symbolic of the veil of sin that prevents us from seeing God. So this veil, literally for the Jews, is a veil that covers the Holy of Holies and does not allow the congregation to have the worthiness to see the Holy of Holies. Only the priest uh, during the atonement festival goes into that uh, Holy of Holies. For the rest of the Jewish people, they do not have access to the Holy of Holies because of this thick curtain. And so when Jesus dies, gave up his, uh, this curtain is torn in two. And that is symbolic of the unveiling or the revealing of God. Now that the curtain is torn, people have access to the Holy of Holies. People, uh, God now is revealed to the people. So, you know, it's uh, important here how the, the, the Gospel writers craft these symbolic events. The death of Jesus and the tearing of the, the curtain of the temple. So through Jesus' death, we now have access to God. We, God is revealed to us. God is shown to us. So what does God, God show us? God shows us the cross. And that is how God reveals himself. Jesus helplessly and uh, decisively gives his life on the cross. God shows himself as totally non-violent, vulnerable like us, and uh, sharing in our vulnerability. Now, what does that mean in terms of uh, community, the Christian faith, and, uh, and uh, who we are as followers of Jesus? It, and we will see this in the resurrection. How this vulnerability, that how this God that Jesus reveals on the cross, as vulnerability becomes a source of power. And how through vulnerability, Jesus begins to bring together a shattered, broken people, you know, the people that, are, that deserted him, to bring them together, to mend the brokenness of life, and go through a conversion, and to change, and to begin to form this community, which led, later became known as Christians, and what is today the biggest religion in the world. So that is the power of this vulnerability, the God that is revealed, as non-violent and vulnerable. Now, this is a very unique kind of power because it's not a power of uh, strength, of uh, money, of uh, weapons. It's not political power, but it's a not a power over people that you can manipulate and dominate people or even bribe people to follow you or offer something in return so that people follow you. 
but it's a power that draws, naturally draws people to, to oneself. Or in this case, that Jesus, you, uh, the, this power draws people to be disciples and to follow Jesus. There's nothing to be paid in return. There's nothing, no blessing is offered. It's just a natural kind of power that attracts, that invites. And so this is the, when we are saved by the passion of Jesus and the cross, we have to link it to this uh, other side of the, the kind of uh, the dynamics that's happening here or the form of power. Now, to, uh, to better understand this form of power, uh, a, a priest uh, uh, used this example very well, uh, and he's a well-known uh, spiritual guide. He says this vulnerability can be compared to, to this. If you put a small baby and a very strong man in one room, and uh, and then, who, between these two, who has the power to draw people to, it, to himself or herself? The baby or the strong man? Who has the power to draw people? Who attracts people? So, of course, it's the baby. Babies are attractive. Babies naturally pull uh, people, invite people to hold and to caress and kiss. Uh, why? Because the baby is vulnerable. And this is this natural kind of uh, the power behind the passion, the power behind the, the cross. And, uh, and it's the power that invites people that draws people to community and to join together for God's mission to love. Now, in history, we know that people, some people followed very closely the path of vulnerability or the path of nonviolence. And they were able to make radical big changes in their world. So we think about Mahatma Gandhi who fought for uh, Indians, India's independence. He used nonviolence. We think about uh, Dr. Mal Martin Luther King in the civil rights movement in the US. He used uh, nonviolence. We think about uh, an American, American woman, Dorothy Day, uh, who also stood for the rights of women again. She used uh, this form of power and was able to go and big, 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 big changes, radical changes for women's dignity and rights in uh, the America. We think of Nelson Mandela, who was in prison for over 20 years and came back and changed his ho uh, whole out outlook about leadership and nonviolence. So, and here, dear friends, lies, I think, the big message for Easter how we can bring change and how we can bring conversion, uh, a, a total change in the way we look at the world, look at each other, and, uh, and, and, and through the, the pathway that Jesus shows us. And it's the pathway of nonviolence, it's the pathway of vulnerability, and, to, and, and, uh, and, uh, and as opposed to the power of money, weapons, and political authority. And if there is a, if, and this is the Easter message for us, that peace, shalom, the gift of the risen Lord, comes with a pathway of vulnerability that leads to community and to love. And so on behalf of the Catholic Church and the whole Christian world, we wish everyone in Fiji and all over the world the, the very peace and shalom of Easter.